I'm Adam from Army Painter, and today we are going to be painting Albear from the Dungeons & Dragons universe using Nozel's Marvelous Pigments Adventurers and Monster Sets. The magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you want it to be. There's a plethora of techniques out there for you to master, but great results require just a few simple techniques, so let's learn a few of them today. To start, you must prime your model. All miniatures, whether they are plastic, resin, or metal, require a primer for your acrylic war paints to adhere to. In the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure set, you'll find War Paints Primer Gray, and this is a great base color for any color you could imagine layering on top of it. We recommend priming your model with a D&D dry brush or any big brush like our monster brush. Now, if you're painting more than a few miniatures at a time, we strongly recommend using color primer sprays to prime your miniatures. The sprays offer a smoother, more even finish in a matter of seconds, and add to that the choice of 24 colors that are 100% matched to our line of war paints, this can be a huge time saver at the paint desk to get you more time for gaming. But for Albear, a brush application works just fine. Remember, you only need a very thin coat of primer on the miniature, that way you don't ruin or hide all of the intricate details. With the primer dry, it's time to add our base coat to Albear. For this, you'll need the war paints from our Monster and Adventurer set, some clean water, a paper towel, and palette. And we'll be using the base coat brush from the Dungeons & Dragons brush set, but any brush will do. The D&D starter brush or a Wargamer regiment brush will work just fine. So let's get right to it. We're going to do our best to replicate the Albear from the box art, a very traditional brown color. So for this, we'll begin basing in the areas that we think should be brown with Albear brown. A fitting name, isn't it? I thin down the paint with a little bit of water just to ensure the paint is flowing smoothly over all of Albear's feathers and fur. Now that the brown is all painted in, it's time to move on to all of the fleshy parts of the model, such as his hands and feet. For this, we're going to be using Ut Yug Brown. We've given the brush a good rinse in water before loading the brush with Ut Yug Brown. Now, you don't have to use Ut Yug, you could use any light brown or pale flesh color like fair skin, but today we're going to do our best to match the box art, so Ut Yug Brown it is. It's a nice compliment to Albear Brown, as it's a nice earthy tone. For this part, we're just concentrating on the hands and feet. Try to be as neat as possible to not get any of this color on the Albear Brown, but if you do, don't worry, you can always go back and fix it later. We finished painting all of the brown bits of the model, so we're going to move on to the parts that will eventually be white, and for this we'll be using Orc Skin. Later in the tutorial, we'll delve into more advanced techniques like highlighting, and in order to achieve a good highlight, it's common to use a base tone that is slightly darker. When you're painting white, you usually want to begin with a light gray. That way, you have a slightly darker base tone that you can add white to without losing any contrast. Again, be careful not to cover any of the browns from the previous step. We're just blocking in the gray with two thin coats as you can see here. With all of the feathers and flesh finish, we're going to move on to painting Albear's tongue, and for that we're going to be using Canbin Crimson. Now you could go ahead and paint the beak first, but I find it's always easier to paint red over gray than it is to paint red over black, and since we'll be painting the beak black in our next steps, we'll go ahead and paint the tongue now. As you can see, we're just applying two thin coats of red so as not to obscure any of the detail. And now that the tongue is finished being based in with red, we're going to move on to all the black parts of the model, like the beak and claws, and for that we're going to use Abyssal Black from the Adventurer set. As you can see, we're still using the base coat brush from the Dungeons & Dragons brush set, and once we've thinned our Abyssal Black a bit, we've loaded our brush and begin carefully painting Albear's beak, careful not to get any of the black paint on the brown or red areas of the model. In this step, we're also going to add a bit of black paint to the tips of Albear's ears, or horns rather. We'll just Feather in, full of puns today here in the Army Painter Studio, we'll just feather in a bit of the black just on the edges of the horns, careful not to overdo it. After we finish painting in the beak and the horns, we'll move on to Albear's claws on his hands and feet. When I first found out that Gale Force 9 would be making an Albear model exclusively for this monster paint set, I was very excited, but when I actually got to see this model with its ferocious claws and that dynamic pose, I couldn't wait to get some paint on it. It's such an imposing figure, and as we're blocking in all of these colors, I can already imagine this model wreaking havoc in the dark depths of the dungeon. And just like that, we finished with Abyssal Black. Albert is really starting to come together now. Now to really animate our fine feathered friend, we're going to paint his eyes a fiery yellow color, but before we do that, we're going to give it a slight base coat with white. 
This layer of white is a nice base for our yellow color that we'll be adding later. It's a bit brighter than our primer and should make painting yellow a bit easier. Colors like yellow, orange, red, and even some greens tend to have very weak pigments. So this two layer step can save you a lot of work and yield a brighter, more vibrant base for our yellow tones. Once the white is dried, we're going to be moving on to our yellow color. That's Fire Newt Orange. This is a very bright and yellow shade orange that is perfect for a forest predator like our owlbear. Careful not to overdo it here. Two or three thin coats and a bit of patience is always better than trying to get one coat coverage from working with weak pigment colors. We're just going to cover the whole eye with Fire Newt Orange, and once we're happy with the coverage, we'll go back to using Abyssal Black. We're just going to be adding a small dot of black to the very center of the eye. Careful to use a steady hand here. I always recommend starting smaller than you think because you can always go back and add another small ring of black to the pupil if you want. Just like that. Once we've dotted the eyes, we gave the base two light coats of Bugbear Brown, then painted the trim with Abyssal Black. With our base coats finished, Albear is ready for some tabletop action. Stopping at this point is perfectly okay. You should be very proud of your work. But in the next steps of our Albear tutorial, we'll venture into some more advanced techniques to take your dungeon dweller to a dungeon master. With all of our base coating complete, we're going to go in and add some shading and definition for the model. And to do that, we'll be using specially formulated quick shade washes. These are easy to identify as they have red lids. Washes are essentially thinned down paints using a specially designed medium and very fine pigment. And as you can see here, we're applying our flesh wash all over the orange, yellows, and light browns, letting the washes settle into the little recesses on the model. And you can already see this technique starting to add depth to the model. While you do want your washes to settle into the recesses, you don't want them to pull up. So if you find some pooling, just like this right about here, just take your brush and push the wash around throughout the model to help dissipate it a little bit. It's good to remember that washes do take a little bit longer to dry, so before you move on to the next step, give the model a few minutes and grab yourself a clean cup of rinse water or make yourself another cup of coffee. And speaking of coffee, I'll be right back. Okay, yeah. Just one second here. Mmm, coffee, 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 coffee. Okay, now that I've had my fifth cup of coffee today and our flesh wash is dry, we're going to wash the rest of the model with brown wash. We're going to be covering all of the brown and black bits of the model with this wash, so be careful not to shade any of the areas we previously washed with flesh tone. Although we're completely covering the model with the wash, be a little patient, make sure, like we said before, that your paint and your washes aren't pulling up. Move those washes around when they start to settle a little bit too much. And once you have everything all covered, with all the feathers washed, you can really begin to see our monster coming to life. While the washing step does add great depth to the model, it also darkens the base tones down a bit. So in the next phase, we're going to be reinvigorating those base tones using a highlighting technique. Now when we're highlighting the model, we're only going to focus on the most raised areas of the model, and we're going to let those washes stay in the recesses. We'll start on all of the brown feathers, and for this we'll be using the dry brush technique and Minotaur Hide from the Monster Paint Set. When you're dry brushing your model, the goal is to leave as little paint as possible on the bristles of your D&D dry brush. So after loading the brush, you want to wipe most of it away on a paper towel, just leaving a bit of the paint inside the bristles. Then, you'll proceed to flick the paint across the feathers with what little paint remains, just like this. This can be a little messy, and naturally you want to go wild with the dry brush, but a little restraint and patience goes a long way in this stage. You'll apply this technique on all of the brown feathers of the model until you're happy with the result. Something about like that. With the dry brush complete, we're going to move on to highlighting all of the other bits of the model. We're going to start with the fleshy bits like the hands and the feet using Utyug Brown and the starter brush from the Adventurer's Box set. For example here, on the raised areas of flesh around the claws of his hands, and here, around the feet. We'll repeat this across the rest of the fleshy bits of the model, as you can see here. Now the black claws and feathers were given a light highlight with a little bit of lich skin. A good rule of thumb when painting, well, owlbear thumbs are when highlighting black, is that less is more. If you highlight it with several layers of gray, you'll end up with a black that looks more gray than black. As you can see here with the edge of the precision brush, and at a perpendicular angle, we are gently pushing our highlight across the claw, reducing pressure as we fade the gray into black, just like that. Once more, using the edge of your brush, 
push the paint back and away, just like that. It's always best to use a little bit of restraint at this stage when you're highlighting black with gray, but if you'd like to push the highlight even brighter, you can always add another layer or use a slightly brighter color. With the claws complete, we'll be moving on to the gray feathers. As we did in the base coat step, we're going to be using orc skin. Always remember to leave the wash in the recess because this will eventually be worked up to pure white in later stages. So we'll want to keep the contrast on these feathers. When we're finished with the feathers, we'll quickly reinforce the red on the tongue using Cambin Crimson and the yellow of the eyes with Fire New Orange. With the first round of highlights complete, Owlbear is looking like he's ready to start a Wayward Wanderers on their quests. It's perfectly fine to stop here as Owlbear is looking really cool, but with a few extra steps, you can bring your model from tabletop quality to masterclass showpiece. Our first highlight will be ruddy skin on the brown feathers. We're going to use a brush to paint a small line in the center of each feather, like so. This is pretty tedious, so bear with me. Then we'll use the edge of our brush to edge highlight all of the edges of the feathers. As there are so many feathers, this step will take quite a while, so take your time. Patience is a virtue here. We'll repeat the exact same steps on the white feathers using Lawful White. Moving on to the tops of the flesh using Fair Skin. Pixie Dust Pink for the tongue. And a fine, very fine line of angelic yellow on the eyes. Careful to use a very steady hand here. Finally, we'll add a small dot of lawful white to the pupil of the eye. This helps to create a reflective effect. With the final highlights applied, it's time to finish off our Albear model using Battlefield's glue, tufts, and rocks to create a scenic base for our miniature. We'll begin by painting a bit of Battlefield's basing glue sporadically to the base. You can use your base coat brush for this, just be sure to thoroughly rinse your brush afterwards. While the glue's still wet, sprinkle some Battlefield's rock sand brown battleground to the bottle and leave it to dry for about an hour. Once the glue has dried, shake off any remaining rocks and using your D&D dry brush and a 50-50 mix of Bugbear Brown and Skeleton Stone, give the model a quick dry brush highlight. A second highlight was applied using the same technique, but with pure skeleton bone. Next, we glued on a few Highland and Swamp Tufts. The contrasting tufts provide a realistic blend of fresh and aging grass. And finally, we gave the rim of the base a fresh coat of abyssal black to neaten up the base and cover up any overpaint from the dry brush stage. We sealed the mini with two light coats of Aegis Suit Satin Spray to help protect the model from wear and tear, and if your gaming groups are anything like ours, it will need it. We're a rowdy bunch. And just like that, Albear is finished, and he's ready to brawl on with your party of heroic adventurers. Remember that all of the paints that you've seen us use in this video today can be found at www.thearmypainter.com or at your friendly local gaming store. And be sure to share your painting adventures with us on Facebook and Instagram by tagging us at The Army Painter.